Hey chums, it's Amy and Ben. We're here to give our initial reactions to the space movie 3022. I'm assuming that's year 3022. Yeah, 3022. We just watched the trailer and thought we'd give you our thoughts. And mine are... I like the concept. I'm a bit worried about the execution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think to set up the premise, um, you know, that couple astro- a couple of astronauts are out in space doing their thing. Um, it looks like they're coming back towards Earth, and then all of a sudden, Earth just kind of like cracks open, like you know, cracks it. like a rotten egg. Yeah. Um, I just don't. You just love how the chicks like. There's something happening to Earth. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, like, are you joking me yeah. right now? I'm like, it, it ain't gonna be a happy it's not, ending. Yeah. It's literally splitting into pieces. Yeah. Um. So then after that, they pretty much. Um. I'm assuming the middle movie will then go with the struggle of really be, being all alone in the universe, particularly mm. when you've got a, a clock ticking down. So because they're in space, um, they're relying on oxygen supplies. supply. Yeah. yeah. And so that will be ticking down. So Food supplies. Yeah. I think oxygen is probably going to be their, their biggest one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I think for me the whole time, so I was watching like, oh yeah, it looks all right. I'll probably, I'll probably still watch the movie, but it just had me thinking straight away. What would I do? Well, I think what this movie seems to work well in doing is grabbing every single possible trope you could think of every like um yeah time sensitive opportunity in space and then putting it all in one movie and that's where it actually starts so instead of it just being at the uh time where you have a space movie where you have relationships develop and everything and then something happens at the um climax point yeah. like earth is about to collapse yeah, or yeah, whatever. yeah this is kind of happening afterwards and then i'm assuming there's going to be something like the kind of event horizon thing where they're out in space and suddenly you realize that someone's gone absolutely crazy because they've been away from people for too long solaris maybe just a lot of different space movies rolled into one i think the um, is is event horizon a a space movie yeah i'm pretty sure it's event horizon uh, Mm. and sunshine as well which kind of reminds me of event horizon where they come across some people who have Gone, gone a bit cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think space is kind of like um, lunacy on overdrive. Yeah, well, I think you, you, know, you and I have spoken about this before. There's those experiments, and I'll look them up and maybe whack them in the description, where um, they have people just being separated away, so isolated. Mm. And for some people, after just 20 minutes of isolation, they start going nutso. Like that, that is, we are not, um, a lot of us, most of us are not equipped to be by ourselves for a very Why long time. Why do you think that is? We're I know so, they we're, start thinking about things. We're social beings. So we rely a lot on, on people like, you know, um, throughout our history. Um, that, that's how we got to where we are. And so our brains are, are, are probably to some degree programmed to seek that out and need that kind of interaction. But it's funny. It's like, um, you know, if your partner's away um, and you're not planning on going out or anything like that. So it's funny ones where, you know, sometimes you're in the house by yourself mm. and you, you're there for like, you know, six hours. You're like, holy shit, I haven't said any any words out loud for six hours. Mm-hmm. And it feels a little bit weird. So, Well, I think there's like the social aspect in terms of like not being able to talk to someone. But I think there's also this fear that, yeah, probably comes from our primal need to uh, feel safe and secure. So when you have people around you, you feel as if you are in a pack Mm -hmm. And whereas if you're by yourself, for example, out in space, there's a certain amount of isolation that I think even comes from the physicality of having those big spacesuits on in comparison to everyone else. You don't ever really get to have human touch. Yeah. So it's like a big thing as well. And I think um, like when you don't have people around you, like even if we're in the house alone and stuff like that, then you're on your own if there's any um, dangers around. Yep. So it's kind of like your uh, fear sensors and your amygdala uh, fight or flight yep. part of your brain is um, at its very height of response yep. activity. And so you can imagine if you never really get a come down from that, um, you can become exhausted. And then you, your exhaustion then fosters additional hallucinations oh, completely. and um, concerns and worries when you're on that brink of kind of overtiredness. Or just overstimulation from constantly being... It's almost like in the in the grips of an anxiety attack the entire time. Yeah. I think it'd be crazy. 
and Angus McFadden from Braveheart 2, which we haven't deigned to watch yet, was is seems to be the captain. I didn't even realise that's out. Is well, I don't out? know if it's out. I oh, think it okay. may have been out quite a while ago, but the point is Angus McFadden in this yep. movie. He's, he's experiencing a resurgence. He was, he was very quiet after he, being he Robert the like Bruce. He has a really interesting... And, and then he came back as Robert the Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> he's really interesting with his eyes. Did yeah. you notice in the last bit, like one <gasps> eye was like really wide and the other one was kind of closed in a weird way? Yeah. I don't know how I, he does that. Do you reckon there's going to be aliens? Possibly. Yeah. Although he, it seems to be very much about the space of space. Yep. The isolation of space. If it does again, if it does go down that kind of event yeah. horizon way, where yeah. you just come across something halfway through, and then it just turns into a really interesting movie, then okay, uh, maybe. But I feel like it's more going to be about their psychological breakdowns. So you reckon similar the, to the descent? Like if you're yeah. in a location where so it's a bit of a space thriller, really. That's where you kind of think of that. It's it's um uh what's that actually? What's that one with Jack Nich- Nicholson that um. Space thriller? No, 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 no. That, that's just like a thriller, thriller. That um, the Shining. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's going to be like the the Shining on a spaceship? Maybe, but I mean, it, it's just one of those things where I, I think it's going to be um, quite obvious. Like that, if you have all, it's it's pretty much an apocalypse, and so yeah. or it's oh, a yeah, dystopian yeah. society, but in space. Because if you've had everyone kind of die out, so suddenly yeah, you look apocalypse. at Earth and yeah. it just um, blows Explode. up, yeah. Then you've got to now deal with your grief. You've got to deal with people you don't necessarily know too well. I don't know what their backstories are with each other. And then you've got to deal with everyone's differing mentalities and how they respond to um, specific experiences that they're going to have on that spaceship. So I imagine there's going to be a a couple of people probably going to go out in actual space. It seems like Angus McFadden's character uh, seems to be quite... um, a, a leader so yeah, he's probably going to be the one yep. that gets out there but it looks like i think her name is kate the red-haired one i can't remember she, what is yeah I was trying she's to look in something is she um she, she used to be Grey's in Grey's anatomy. anatomy and then had her own spin-off yeah, yeah. so I think she's an aussie okay so she's probably going to be um going crazy yeah she's so got th- blood covering her face somewhere in there Ah, uh, okay. I think, yeah, it's interesting that, yeah, yeah, so they've got, you know, Earth blows up and they're going to be dealing with um, one, um, that existential crisis and that they are truly now alone. Um, you know, I imagine if you're up in space, that, that feeling of being alone mm. is it's some way mitigated by the fact that you're going to be going home back to all your family. And yeah. now that's that's not possible. You are, you are it. But then you've also got to add more anxiety and stress into the situation that they are really looking into the face of their own mortality mm. because they're very finite resources. Well, time's ticking down and I find that interesting as well because if you usually in these types of movies, if you go out, it's because you have a big journey to kind of go on. So yep. the impetus to leave Earth might be because there's going to be something happening to Earth. Yep. But yep. you've generally got the supplies or you've got the uh, wherewithal to think that you're going to venture to another planet yep. or something or you're going to look out for new life. Mm. I don't think these guys planned on having that long venture yeah. journey. They may have been just out you know, circulating the globe because it's 3022. Or so coming probably, back. Yeah, so p- people probably um, do that on a regular basis or a semi-regular basis, and they're not prepared to actually make those long journeys. So what that tells me then is that there's an additional um, concern that there's no way they're going to get anywhere. So you, yeah. ha- as you said, you're facing your own mortality, not necessarily as a possibility when there's um, odds stacked against you, but when you actually know that you're not going to reach any destination, there's yeah. nothing to go back to. There's nothing that you no know resources. of yeah, to go yeah. forward to. And it really is just time sands through the hourglass until your last breath, which will probably be pretty um, painful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think with that, you kind of just go to sleep. Uh, but um, like I said, limited resources and human beings, it's not a good mix. Yeah. Um, we get crazy and we tear each other apart. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, look, it, it, it might be, um, I said, I, I think I'll still like to watch this one. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I'm not sure about the quality of the movie, but I'm interested in the concept and I think it's going to be very thought provoking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys, let us know what you think in the comments below while you're there. Hit, hit like, like, hit subscribe. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.